When a typical cylinder is filled to its design pressure of 2400 psi, it will contain almost 300 cubic feet of atmospheric pressure gas, or about 160 times the internal volume of the cylinder. This compression of gas represents a tremendous amount of stored energy. If the outlet valve is broken off, the sudden release of compressed gas can turn the cylinder into a missile with energy to shoot through a cinder block wall. In one reported incident, a damaged cylinder penetrated two sheet metal walls before becoming airborne and exiting through the roof. The tank reached an altitude of 140 feet before falling back through the building's roof a second time. When a steel cylinder becomes a projectile, it can move with great force, at high speeds, and in unpredictable directions, with the potential to cause serious or fatal injuries. I was totally expecting it not to actually work. Okay, so the first set of slides here is the wrench the gentleman was using to take the valve off the cylinder. This just shows the valves fitting on the cylinder. This is a chain vise he was using to hold the cylinder on the workbench. And when the cylinder exploded, just ripped the chain right off the vise. And the cylinder bounced around here hit the uh, workbench you can see the workbench is pretty much damaged here and uh, this item on the workbench just happens to be the gentleman's watch that was ripped completely off his arm and his arm was severed completely between the elbow and the wrist this is where his severed arm landed the explosion was so hot that it melted the inside of the top of the cylinder and it also melted the threads where the cylinder valve attached. back and then you're going to want to bring this down obviously keep it through the lowest to the ground as you can. Truck, lift this up. 
we would like to at least put a secure the top of the bottle with the strap here just to keep the bottle in place before we pull the lift out. Just to make sure that this bottle is secure where it's not going to fall out of the truck. You gotta wake up and pay attention. So we have our bottle secured back into the truck here, so the next step that we're going to do is attach this re regulator back in place here. So after you've got this snugged up with your fingers, you're going to take this wrench that's attached here to the side of the wall here, and you're just going to pull it down where it's snug. You're not going to make it real tight to where you strip it, you just want to just have it tight just about like so. And just to make sure that there's no leaks or everything's in place right, you just go ahead and turn this bottle on. Okay, I don't hear any air leaks. Gauge is working. Uh, we're reading 1500 uh, PSI, so everything looks good there. This cross member right here to make sure again that this tank is fully secured. We got this cross member is secured. As you can see, this bottle is in here very sturdy where it's not loose, it's not going to move anywhere, especially when the truck's moving. Um, and that is the uh, proper way of placing a O2 bottle back into the truck.